why do why is it that people get drunk? I mean, obviously you can get drunk because you didn't plan to drink that much, but you did. But why else do people get drunk? Yeah. Calm your nerves. What's that? Calm your nerves. Calm your nerves. It makes you feel better, yeah. Taking out of the stress out of your life. Yeah, it helps you to, to reduce the stress. And you see what it is, is that it's not even really reducing the stress. It's just reducing the feeling of the stress. I have friends that, that drink quite a bit. And one, uh, one specific friend I'm thinking of who uh, helped just growing up where I grew up in, in Echo Park, you saw that people drank a lot. And one of the reasons that people drank a lot was because we were poor. You see a problem with this. You know, alcohol is expensive, man. You, know, you get a case of Diet Coke for the same price as, as, as one drink, one alcoholic drink. Um, but what, what, what is it that you're getting for that? Well, you're getting the escape. That's what you're paying for. And the thing that causes, helps you to, to escape whatever it is that you're, that you're doing. Now, sure, before, if you've never done it before, maybe it's about the experience. But largely as we get, as we get older, especially when you're talking about you know, closer to his age and especially adulthood, people who've known better, who've done these things for a while, it's an attempt to escape a reality. And oftentimes the reality that we're escaping is one that we've created for ourselves. You know, again, as he's talking about overdoing it here, you know, drunkenness, but the idea is that if life was about feeling good, if that was the whole reason that we're here, then, well then, geez, getting drunk would be good enough. You know, it's like, you know, that would be the advice to give everybody all the time. I mean, a friend comes to you and says, oh, I'm stressed out because, you know, whatever. Um, you know, I'm, not gonna, I'm worried that I'm not going to graduate. So what should you do? Get drunk. You know, you'll feel alright about it. You know, you'll forget about that. Yeah, but then I'm going to sober up. I'll be thinking about it tomorrow. So what do you do? You get drink again? Yeah, drink again. Get drunk again. Because if, if it was all about happiness. Now, it's not just about alcohol here, of course. You know, I wonder if any of you are that person that your friends come to for advice. You know, if any of you guys are that person because you're a good listener. Or people think that you're wise, that you've got some intelligent things to say. But there are those people, I'm sure some of you either are that person or you guys have a friend who you go to for advice. And, you know, sometimes at some point you're going to get somebody who's going to come to you and is going to ask you something that's, that's just really, you know, hard to answer. And so if we want to cop out, what kind of an answer do we give? Do whatever makes you happy. And they're like, oh, thank you so much. And then you gave each other hugs. Um, when I was a first-year teacher... I had a student who came to me, and um, she was, it was a 10th grade class, and she was interesting. I found out later she was 17. She was, in, she was in, in 10th grade English. She just started school late. So one day she asked me if she could talk to me outside. So I said, sure, went outside. And essentially, she, she looked like she was just having a bad day. And we didn't get along at first, but we ended up getting along eventually. And she said that um, she just got some horrible news for her, and I what's that? Well, she was pregnant. I was like, oh. And so, the, you know, the father came here and everything like that. And she said, I don't know what to do. And she essentially re, uh, related a lot of her problems in her life to her relationship with her mom. Her mom was a mom who would, like, show up for a while and raise her for a few months. She lived with her grandparents. And then would just disappear for a few months. And then would show back up and be a mom again and then disappear for a few months. So she related a lot of her problems to that kind of volatility growing up. And she was worried about what kind of a parent she would be and, and all this kind of stuff, especially being only in 10th grade. And so she was kind of going through pros and cons, and she says, I don't know if I should have a baby. I don't know if I should abort the baby. I don't know if I should put it for adoption. And she takes a big sigh, and she says, just tell me what to do. I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> no pressure, right? No pressure. <laughs> and so I remember thinking about that years later and thinking, you know, I should have just told her. Do what makes you happy. <laughs> you know? People come to us for advice because they want actual advice. And so we should be patient with people who, who give us advice when we ask for it. And we should only ask advice of people who we really want the advice from. But so oftentimes what we're looking for is that kind of an answer. Something that will just make us happy. But if being happy was the only goal of life, then getting drunk all the time would... would would be fine. It'd be the supreme, val supremely valid human experience. But there's something in us that tells us that there's more to life than just that. There's more to life than just feeling good. In fact, the people you're going to find who, who are probably some miserable people are oftentimes trying to find something that makes them happy. They're pursuing happiness. But this is part of the problem. 
happiness we're going to find is not something that you can pursue. I'll say it again, happiness is not something that you can pursue. Happiness is something that has to ensue. It's something that you, you, you're going to do something in your life, whatever it is, and then you're going to realize afterwards, wow, that just made me happy. You know, like for example, if any of you, I don't know, run track or whatever, you probably found out that, that running made you happy because you did it. You probably didn't say, wow, I'm miserable, let me try running and see if that makes me happy. You know, you probably ran, you probably gave it a shot, tried something new, and then you found out that you enjoyed it. You know, the same is maybe true, like for example, why is it that we have electives? So you guys just register for your classes. And then, you know, you have to choose, you guys choose electives already, right, for 11th grade? Yeah. And why do you choose electives? Because they want to give you an opportunity to try things that might interest you, and then maybe you'll take it, and then you're going to find out that you enjoy it. Maybe that's the case. You know? Again, happiness is not something that you can pursue. It's something that has to come from what it is that you're doing, and you're going to find it by, by experiencing new things and trying new things. And then once you find those things, then you do them, and you do them a lot. And then, that's, you're going to, and then you're going to find that those are the things that, that make up an enjoyable life. And what you're going to find is going to be weird, like the stuff that you enjoy. You know, maybe you're going to enjoy, um, who knows, cleaning. Maybe you guys, like, I don't know, maybe you would admit it, or maybe you would. Maybe you guys enjoy cleaning? Oh, yeah. There's something that's pretty awesome about cleaning, because it gives you control over things in that little quarter of your life that you don't have control over anywhere else. You know? Like one of the things I tell you guys all the time, clean your room, clean your room. Because if you, can, if you can clean your room, then you can take control over that one little area of your life that you have control over. And then keeping it clean is also going to be very difficult. But if any of you guys come by after school, right, if any of you have, what, would you, what do you find me doing? Take a guess. Cleaning, cleaning this room. Uh, the custodians only take out the trash. I do everything else. Which, if any of you have been in here, sometimes you'll see that the trash cans overflow. So even then, the custodians don't always do that stuff. You know, but there's a thing there where... I have control over it, you know? I mean, I, I know some people get very angry because the custodians don't come through and clean everything every day, and it makes them very miserable. Well, that, that there's, it's now adding misery to your life. How could you fix that in cleaning? And afterwards, you clean it, and then there's a weird, strange sense of satisfaction of, wow, I, I did something cool there. I cleaned it, you know? And then, you know, maybe something else, like running. Gosh, running is like a weird thing. You enjoy just going out there and running around? Yeah, some people do, you know? My goodness, you know, when you go to college, you can study geology. You know what geology is? Who knows? It's a study of rocks. Anybody fascinated by rocks? Anybody think rocks are going to make you happy? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. But there are people, there's a study of that, which means that people enjoy it. Everything that there's a study of, that means there are people who actually enjoy it. People don't necessarily go into it and say, well... The world needs geologists, so I'm going to do it, even though I hate it. No, people actually enjoy that stuff. But having said that, sometimes what you will find is that, in fact, I think most of the time what you're going to find is that the, the things that give you the most happiness and enjoyment in life are going to be the responsibilities that you take on and that you fulfill. Yeah. Even if you think, like, oh, you get a job, I don't want to it's a responsibility. Yeah, but there's a satisfaction that's there. When you guys, uh, if you move out of your houses and start paying rent, and people will tell you, like, you know, these are the best years of your life, because when you graduate, when you go out into the real world, you're going to discover what it's like to have to pay bills. You know what else you're going to discover? That you pay bills for the things that you want to pay bills for, and that what you pay bills for are yours. You don't have to ask for money. You don't have to go around and ask your parents for this or ask your parents for that. If you want something, you go to work, you get it, and you take your money down and you buy the thing that you want. You get the phone that you want, or you get the apartment that you want to live in. Even the roommate, maybe, that you want. All of these things you get to choose for yourself, but that's what goes along with, with taking on the responsibility of maturing. You know, and there's a great joy that comes from that. You know? And so, what it tells us is that trying to, trying to pursue the things that we think are going to make us happy, probably not going to make us happy. But the things that we just kind of wind up in and start doing, we're going to find, strangely enough, will make us happy a lot of times. You know, again. You know, happiness is not something that you can pursue. It must be something that ends from what you're doing. So, yeah. Questions? Yes? So what did you tell the girl? What's that? For advice, when she asked for the advice, what did you tell her? It's a good question. Read the book. Others? Yeah. 
Why was it only drunkenness? That's a very good question, by the way. Why drunkenness? He actually, there's a good reason for it. Was he an alcoholic? No, he just looked like it. <laughs> by the way, this is a guy who knows about happiness, right? Look at his face. He looks like a very happy man, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> um, why drunkenness? Be, um, because drunkenness is the thing that you can think of as like losing all reason. Like when you, when you, when you, when somebody gets drunk, the parts of your brain that shut down are things like, you know, the, the parts that control inhibition, the things that stop you from, normally you would do things, you know, you would, um, things that you wouldn't normally do, you know, that you'll, you'll do those things. Um, it eliminates, it not eliminates, sorry, it decreases your, your capacity to reason. So it essentially reduces you down, takes you from being a full human down to something a little bit different, something less than, you know, because you lose all those higher faculties. Or your, sorry, to be more precise, your higher faculties are compromised. And so it reduces you down to something else. You know? And so, yeah, that is that, that's the stuff that, because what, what makes us unhappy a lot of times are our faculties to reason. You know? I mean, if you, if you have, um, is your cat worried about tomorrow? You know? I imagine not. And I've been, if you're talking to your cat, I can, let me know, I can give you a referral. But my, I imagine that your, your cat probably isn't even worried about tomorrow. Think about that. Your cat only eats because you dump food in his bowl from a bag. And it's the same food every single time, probably. You know? But your cat, even though your cat is 100% dependent on you for those things, your cat probably doesn't worry about tomorrow. Why not? Because it doesn't have the ability to think about tomorrow, to conceptualize it tomorrow. The same is true about dogs. And the same is true, by the way, about, little, about, about babies and little kids. They don't have the ability to conceptualize tomorrow, but you do, and that's why you worry so much. But little kids also don't have the ability to, to self-reflect and think about themselves and ask, you know, why am I suffering from anxiety and depression? They don't even have the ability a lot of times to even realize that that is what they're experiencing. There's something that, there, there's a big trade-off that goes along with being self-aware. Once you're aware of yourself, and you know, once you're self-aware, well, there's negative consequences that go along with that. Now you start to become aware that you're sad or anxious or you go, you know, you're you know, angry or, or whatever. And then you start to broaden that out and you realize, wow, I'm going to be alive for, you know, however long. And then after that I die. And then you can conceptualize this fear of death, this terror of death that goes along with that. And then you have the ability to, to understand how large the universe is and how tiny, teeny, tiny we are in that thing, how teeny tiny you are compared to that teeny tiny world in this massive universe, and all these things that start to pile up with anxieties. Your cat just wants to get out of the bowl, man. You know? And so one of the ways that you can eliminate those sorts of things is drunkenness. Which is one of the reasons that people do it. So, long answer to your short question. Others? Easy. Go ahead and put those away. How about your papers from last time? <laughs>